I'm pleased to say that on the line now we've got um, a, a guy who played for a number of football clubs, Wolves, Manchester City, uh, and also the San Diego Soccers. And at one time, uh, he was the most expensive transfer in football. Uh, we've got Steve Daly on with us tonight. Good evening, Steve. Hello there. How are you doing? I'm not too bad, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thanks very much. Fantastic. Um, sort of to, to dive straight in, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you tonight, obviously, um, you moved to Manchester City for uh, £1,400,375, £1, £1, you know, 15, one and a half million, shall we say, for a round figure. Yeah. If you um, compared that to today's transfer market, what would, how much do you think that would be in comparison? I don't know. I think some people have tried to work it out, and I think it's probably in the region of about 25 to 30 million, right. I think. Somewhere in that region, somewhere yeah, in that bracket right. anyway. Right, okay, so, so a, fair, a fair whack. Um, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the amount that something like Luis Suarez is probably going to go for this summer. Um, well, if, if he goes, yeah, it'd probably be in that region, I would imagine, yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously you, you started at Wolves, um, scored on your debut I believe, Chris was there. Uh, I did, yeah, I, I played against uh, Southampton, uh, it was 1971-72 season at Molyneux, uh, we won 4-2 and I was I was fortunate enough to score the fourth one, yeah. which was very pleasing on my debut, yeah it was good. Yeah, so, so what memories do you have of that, can you still envisage the build up to the goal and things? Sorry, what was that? What memories do you have of it? Can you still sort of close your eyes and see the build up to the goal and how it all went? Yeah, it got played down the right hand side and um, kicking into the north bank end at Molyneux and uh, Danny Hegan was played in down the right hand side, took it to the byline, pulled it back by the penalty spot and it was just a question of me uh, just tapping it in over the line past, uh, I think it was Eric Steele that was in goal for Southampton right, at the yeah. time. Right, right, fantastic. Obviously you won the League Cup as well in, in 74 with, with Wolves. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't in the team at that time. Well, I, worked, yeah. uh, I didn't play that game. I played the week before at Old Trafford. Right, right. Um, we, we 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 played Man United. Obviously, mm -hmm. we drew no goals, and it was probably one of the best games I'd had as a Wolves player. Right. But the reason I played that game was that Mick Bailey, mm -hmm. uh, who was skipper at the time, uh, had got a foot injury, and we travelled down after the game down to London for the the cup final the following week. And Bill McGarry pulled me to one side. Said, "Look, you had a, you had a great game yesterday." He said. And, you're young enough to come back to Wembley as a player and uh, Mick Bailey, um, bless him, getting on in years and uh, he may not have the time that you have in the game. So if he's fit, I'm going to play him and, uh, and that'll be it. And, and Mick recovered from, from injury, as was expected, and, and yeah. captained the team to, to beat Manchester City. Fantastic. Well, I think it, it sort of sums it up there. The manager said obviously he hasn't got the, the time in his career to get back there. You, you were still a young guy, weren't you? So no hard feelings about that? Oh God, no, no, not at all. I, funnily enough, I left, uh, I left Wolves and they got to Wembley again against Notts Forest. I uh, left City and they got to Wembley. So I was, I was a bit of a, a bit of a Jonah, to be honest with you. Every, everywhere lucky... I left, uh, people got to Wembley. A bit of a lucky charm, by the sound of it. One thing I, I noticed when I was doing sort of the, you know a bit of research for for the interview is that yeah. in the eighty during eighty four. You play, when you were at San Diego Soccer, you played indoor football. Yeah, we did. It was um, it was the uh, MISL, the Major Indoor Soccer League. Right. And it, it was it basically it, it, the, the the outdoor season was the same as in England, the ten months of the year. But probably three or four months into that season, you'd start playing the indoor league, which was uh, seven aside, and um, it was basically in ice hockey arenas with astroturf on top of the ice. And uh, it was it was hard, but uh, it was enjoyable. But I think it, it, I played too much football in the, in the space of uh, four years in total. I was out there. It was I was playing virtually four years, you know, twelve months of the year all round, yeah. which was a bit harsh. Which has caused me I need I need two new hips and two new knees now. So. Yeah, Chris mentioned that when he when he told me that you were coming on the show. Um, that you've had an op operation this week, I believe. No, it was yeah, it was cancelled. I mean, oh, right. I'm going next Wednesday. All oh, right. Well, hopefully uh, everything goes uh, well. Seven o'clock in the uh, morning in, in Wolverhampton to have a hip replacement. Yeah. Right. Well, hopefully and I was talking to out. a mate of mine last week, Tony Curry, and I uh, I put part of the blame on him, on him having to <laughs> having to chase him around Allen Road and Bramall Lane in the seventies <laughs> and getting get nowhere near him in all fairness. Um, I'm gonna. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm gonna open the, the the questions up to to Chris who. Obviously, did fantastic work arranging the interview with you, Steve. Okay. So 
So over to you, Chris. Yeah, I'm, I'm just sorry, my phone went. Um, I want to speak about more about that. You reached the first UEFA Cup final and you scored in the semi finals, I read. I did, yeah, after about 15 seconds, Chris, yeah. That, same again, the, it, was a, well, it, was a, it was a Tuesday night game against Fedor's Vardas and um, the ball again got played down the right hand side by uh, Alan Sunderland, who later yeah. went to Arsenal, but Alan was playing right back because he, he was. Uh, he was quite a versatile player and uh, he's knocked it down the right for I think John Richards and John's put it across and uh, it's just come to everybody and I've just, I've, I've hit it hopefully really, it could have gone anywhere I and mean, fortunately enough it went in the top corner, which was which was great, it gave us a great start to the game. Mm. And then did he, you only made the bench in the, the final there didn't you? I, yeah, I, I, it, same again. It was um, it was a, it was a it was a cup, cup semi final and it was a, a prestigious game. And uh, Dave Wagstaff, who was a great, who was a fabulous, fabulous player, great left footed player. Uh, and he came back from injury and he, he took my place. But uh, it's a memory that you, you know you can't take away. And uh, I think it might still be a record in that uh, in that competition. I'm not sure, but it may be or may not be. I'm not quite sure. And when you were playing in the North American Scottish League, was it coming towards the end of its popularity? Um, well, when I got there, um, <laughs> you, you'd run out against uh, Fort Lauderdale strikers who've got Gerd Muller playing, and um, yeah. you uh, Washington who've got Johan Cruyff playing, and then you go to the Cosmos in New York, and they got Carlos Alberto, Franz Beckenbauer, Rice Bergen, uh, Giorgio Canalia, uh, fantastic players. Then you go to Vancouver. And they've got Rudy Kroll playing and people like that. It was uh, it was fabulous to to see these players and, and play against such quality. It's, it's incredible, absolutely incredible. Yeah, I'm making the All Star team twice. Must be sorry. Must be really proud, mate. Making the All Star team twice. Yeah, it was, really it was great. It, uh, I, it, you know, I, uh, the way things went at Manchester, it, it obviously it wasn't the best situation. I think I went into a. Uh, an era there that was um, looking to start again and then bring new players in and uh, after I'd left a team that was well established in um, in, in, in uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers where I played with Kenny Ibbett and Willie Carr for about four or five years uh, and we've got a great understanding but going to Manchester um, it uh, it was a new era uh, Malcolm had come back for the second time and uh, I think it was the morning I signed uh, I think in the afternoon they, they sold four players, which was Gary Owen, Asa Alford, Peter Barnes and Mick Shannon. And I, 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 I felt it was just time and I needed to, to um, probably go abroad and, and play somewhere else. And I did that by going to the, the States. And it was, it was a fantastic time. I really, really enjoyed it. And to make, like you say, make the All-Star team was, uh, yeah, it was a privilege. It was great. When you look at so many, so many good players that were there, from all over the world, you know, you've got Brazilians, you've got Mexicans, you've got Argentinians, uh, it, 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 Germans, Germans, you know, it, they were fabulous players from all over the world and it was, it was great to be a part of that. Um, just if I can jump in there, Chris, uh, Steve, yep. you've mentioned that um, your time at Manchester wasn't maybe the best. No. Um, <clears throat> when we were When we were looking uh, for, for things to really ask you when we, when we found out you were coming on the show, one thing I come across is... Uh, an article in the Observer from 2001. It was a what? An article. An article in the Observer from 2001. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, your tone of your voice says you know the article that I'm referring to. Yeah. Um, I mean, how d did you sort of have that feeling that you know maybe you'd been bought for maybe too high a fee? Because I you know Brian Robson had just been signed for Manchester United at a similar time for a similar fee. Yeah, as I've said a few minutes ago. Um, Brian was probably going into a, an established team uh, with, with players that have been there, you know, seasoned pros that have been there for a number of years, and uh, it was probably easier to fit in there. I mean, that's why I went to City and we got um, Steve McKenzie, who, don't get me wrong, was a, a great player. I mean, he was, I think he was 17 years of age, and we got um, Tommy Caton, centre half, God rest his soul, at the back, who was 15. And after, after training in the afternoon, Tommy used to go up to the boardroom for, for school lessons, you know? Yeah. It was incredible. Uh, and we got uh, Kazidania from Poland, we got uh, Stepanovic, German. And uh, it, it was um, a, a part of my career where it was, I think they were trying to redevelop Manchester City and um, 
it, it, it was very difficult, you know. New players left and new players came in, uh, and it was a transitional period for the club. And, and unfortunately, from my side of the fence, it uh, it didn't really work. Yeah, we, I'm just looking at the, the article now, and I think normally if you had a a debut and the the description of the debut was everything he did was neat and clever, but then it doesn't sound you know it's not, it doesn't sound bad. I think that the fee and the the, the day and age that it was probably makes it maybe makes it look worse but you know it, it, it is one of them and obviously it, it, it can happen um, well, it, was, it was quite funny really because I made my debut for Wolves against Southampton at Molyneux and we beat them yeah. and my debut for City was against Southampton and we lost 1-0 and I think you, you probably go into a game hoping not to do anything wrong make sure the first thing you do it's, it's a positive thing if yeah. you pass the ball make sure it goes to one of your own teammates if you if you're going to a tackle make sure you win it make sure you win your first header and i tried to do all those things so it wasn't it, it wasn't a great performance by myself but it, it wasn't a bad one yeah. you know it was it's probably a six out of ten seven out of ten situation yeah. uh but there, there was we'd lost a lot of players to injury in terms of Willie Donachie and, and we'd lose Tommy Booth every now and again through his through basically Tom's commitment into heading the ball and, and tackling and Tom put himself into situations where he, nine times out of ten he, he would get hurt you know and uh, he was a big miss to, to the team and we had uh, Mickey Robinson that had just come in from Preston Stuart Lee from Stockport uh, Bobby Shinton from I think it was uh, Wrexham so it, it was a transitional period in terms of, of, of you know, settling in uh, as, as, and progressing as a team. But uh, me being the, the most expensive player, uh, I think a lot of people looked to me to turn things around. And it, it was when you're not having the best of times yourself, you know, you tend to concentrate on your own performance as opposed to, to, to anybody else. You want to get your own game right. Yeah. And, uh, and then start and, and, and help others. But uh, obviously it, uh, it took a lot longer to get my game right <laughs> than I thought. Um. <laughs> Thanks for answering that question. I, obviously, I know it, it might it isn't probably easy to hear. Uh, Owen, I know you've got a couple of questions for Steve. Yeah, hi Steve. Um, hi Owen. How are I, you? I just, sorry, sorry to touch again on the uh, on the fee. It is it is a, an intriguing talking point. I think um, I actually just wanted to put a spin on it in the sense that um, it's often looked upon that your time at Man City wasn't great and the fee was overpaid, but. Yeah. Well, obviously, City thought you were worth that at the time. I mean, as you said, as you said earlier, you had a good career at Wolves. I think you've earned a reputation, yeah. and um, you know, as a as a box to box midfielder, someone who could score goals. Um, do, do you look back on your career, and, and uh, is, is it a bit? Um, I don't want to say bitter, but you know, do, is it a little bit sad that people maybe reflect on that on that price tag more than? You know, in, um, in general, it was a, you had a successful career, or do you just? Is it something you live with, and you know you? You know, you just get, I'll tell get you what, and I mean, you know, it, it's, you know when, when, when the guys asked me to come on the show and, and one of them remarked about the, the fee and everything, and, you know, it seems like it... I remember it as though it was yesterday. I, I really do. It, it was as though it was yesterday. But as I've said, you know, it was, um, it was, a, I mean, it was a massive club. Don't get me wrong, it was a fantastic club. And to be honest with you, the, the fans were brilliant with me. I'd, I'd, you know, they were, they were superb with me. But it was going into that club where so many players had gone and so many players were coming in and, and I cost the most money. And, and if, if you're a player that's leaving a club and the club don't want you to leave, really, they're going to get, they're going to get as much as they can for you. And if the buying club want you as bad as Manchester City did, then they, they're going to pay the fee. And I think the, the, the ironic thing is that I think everybody focused on Trevor Francis and myself and, and Brian and um, Dan Robson. But now, because it, it, it didn't happen, it didn't happen that often, did it, in, in those days, that people were going for that sort of money. But you look at it now, and every time you pick the paper up on a the morning, there's somebody going for between 20 and 30 million. You know, it, it's just, it just happens that often nowadays, but in the 70s, it, it, it hardly ever happened. And I, I, never, I never said I was worth one and a half million. I, I was the player, I got nothing to do with that situation. That was between the two, two managing uh, directors of the club, the two chairmen of the club, to, uh, to decide the fee, and they both agreed on that, 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 uh, that figure. And I, I was just the player in the middle of that. So all you can do is do, is do your best. And, but as I said, it was a transitional period at the club, and, and unfortunately, it didn't work. It, uh, it's obvious that it didn't work, but no one is more disappointed than me that it didn't work, Owen, you know, because 
I, I've got a lot of pride and, and determination and I, and I really wanted it to work. But And looking back, I wish I'd have stayed. Because I actually signed a 10-year contract at, at Main Road. And looking back, I wish I'd have stopped and fought and battled and turned things around. But, you know, you get to that situation where you don't think it's going to work and, and you think the best thing to do is, is move on. But looking back, I wish I'd have stayed and battled it out and turned it all around. But that's too late to do that now. Well, thank you very much for answering that so honestly there, Steve. Um, and my second question actually was, uh, just move away completely from that, is uh, I actually, um, I also read some some fantastic quotes whilst I was uh, looking back on your career. And uh, the one that stuck out for me is uh, the game where you face, you played against George Best. And you gave each other a bit... Gave each other a bit of a ribbing uh, before then heading out for a night on the uh, on the tyre. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. We, we played. Joe, uh, George was playing for uh, San Jose, and it was an indoor yeah. game. And um, I, I think George, uh, mate, uh, before we went further, what an incredible player! He's, he's yeah. the best player I've ever seen. Greatest in my life. player of all time, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, absolutely amazing uh, player, and such a great guy as well. God rest him. And um, he got to the. We were we were we were having a bit of a bad time at our team playing against San Jose. I think it was getting beat because it was indoor. I think it was getting to be about four or five nil. I think. And every time George said to me, said something to the referee, he gave George the free kick. And I said to the referee, "You may as well give him the whistle because he's making a better job of it than you are." <laughs> and uh, George heard that. And um, George said, "So he, he said something to me about the, the size of my transfer fee." Then I said something to George which I'm not going to tell you what I said, but it wasn't nice. And um, we, 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 just, we, we, we just said, got on with the game. And after the game, I went around to their dressing room and said, mate, I'm sorry about what I said. I shouldn't have said it. And, um, and he said, when are you going back to, uh, to San Diego? I said, tomorrow. He said, well, come down to my bar for a drink tonight, bring some of the lads down. And it was called Besties in Anaheim. And uh, we took a few of the lads down there, and they had a couple of beers with George, and it was it was a great night. It was a great night. Great guy, fantastic man. Brilliant story. Thank you very much. Um, obviously, we've looked at your playing career in in a little bit of depth there, Steve. But it won't take long there, would it? You know? <laughs> um, I just wanted to touch on your management career. Right. Um, with Telford, um, and you, you managed a couple of other teams, Brom, Bromsgrove Rovers, and, and yeah, Bromsgrove well. Rovers. Yes. Yeah. Was management something that was always on, you know, your radar to go into? No, no, it, it wasn't. It, um, do you know, we, we, my wife and myself sat down and worked out uh, how many hours as we had uh, in the course of my career, and, um, and and bless my wife, she whatever we've gone, she's up roots and, uh, and 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 come with us, like come with me, you know, and. Uh, I think we counted up between here and the States uh, and Manchester. We'd had about, I don't know, eight or nine houses in about 14 years, you know. Yeah. And, and I just said that, well, look, you know, when when we finish playing, we'll get back to Wolverhampton and we'll settle down there. And uh, manage, management never came into into my thoughts because um, I think if, if you, you get on the management roundabout and you're successful, someone's going to come and take you somewhere else you have to move again mm -hmm. and if you're not successful you get the sack and then you have to try and get on the roundabout somewhere else and I thought well if I if I, it doesn't really appeal to me to be honest with you and I, I just took the job at Telford and Brums Rovers because they, they were quite local to me anyway but it was never something that I was going to pursue as, uh, as a career it, uh, it didn't interest me in, the, in, uh, in that degree to be honest with you yeah, I mean, the other thing I wanted to touch on before we finish tonight, Steve, is your after dinner speaking. Yeah, um, you know that one and a half million pound transfer has, 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 has given me a, an after dinner speech, and it's it, it is quite self deprecating. So I'm a success at being a failure, really. <laughs> when you think about it, you know I'm a, I'm a success at being a failure as a football. But I'm a successful enough to do the speaker talking about it. So it, it's it's good. I've been doing it for about 15, 16 years now, and uh, Touchwood is still going quite strong. So I'm, I'm I'm pleased with that. Very good. Well, well fingers crossed. If you have one, um, you know, around Manchester, Liverpool, anywhere like that, we'll, we'll be able to attend and uh, and have a listen to you. You know, talking about one failure while you've been another failure, as you put it. <laughs> 
Well, I, I do quite a few at the Etihad, so <laughs> if you ever get to the Etihad, mate, you know, uh, pop along and I'm, have I'm a sure, look at the drink. I'm sure honest. we can speak to our editor about getting some tickets to that on, on behalf of the VT Journal and doing a review. I don't know okay. what Chris thinks about that. What do you reckon, mate? Adam, swing yeah, for us. that's fine. I'm sorry something to tell you. You give me a ring and I'll sorry something out. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, well, uh, unless uh, any of the other guys have got any questions. Uh, I've got a couple of forum questions. Yeah, go far away, Chris. Yeah, um, Ozzy Mahmood asked, have you got a go-to story when you do your after-dinner speech? Have I got a... After this, when you're doing your after-dinner speech? I mean, yes. On the after-dinner circuits, do you have a go-to story that's not going very well? Uh, that... No, uh, you know, d- 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 doesn't go down very well. Is that what you said? Oh, if, if it's not going as well as you think it's going, you'll have a funny story you usually go towards. To uh, yeah, something. Yeah, you, you learn. You learn to take the the whenever you do a speech. If you think something's not not gone right, gone gone down as well as you expected, you just change a couple of things around in it. You know, in in terms of words and in, in the story and um, and and and, and re re sort of say to yourself as, as you'd use it differently, you know, and you think, oh, well, yeah, I could have used that a bit better and I uh, could have said that then and, and used that then in that uh, in that sequence. And uh, But, yeah, I mean, it's it's good. It's um, I, I enjoyed it. It lasts about 40 minutes, so, and it seems yeah. to go down well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. And uh, one more here. Nick Davies asked, uh, are you disappointed with the way Wolves are performing? Oh, absolutely. Recently? Absolutely, yeah. It's um, it, it's it, it's it's devastating because I, I, I keep in touch with a lot of the old players like John Richards, Willie Carr, Kenny Ebert, Phil Parks, Jack Palm, and, and and John McCall and Derek Parkin, and we enjoyed the, we enjoyed a great time of the Wolves in the seventies, and and you look now at, at where the club is in Division One, which is basically the old third division, I think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the old third division. And it's just, it's a tragedy to see it down there with, with the, the sort of stadium they've got now. When you consider that two seasons ago, their local derby was uh, West Bromwich Albion. The derby this season is going to be Walsall and Shrewsbury, you know. And you're not going to get the, the Man Uniteds and the Arsenals and the Chelsea's and the Liverpools and the Man City's bringing three, four, maybe five or six thousand people with them, you know. So the crowds are going to suffer, the town's going to suffer. Uh, season tickets are going to suffer, and it, it's just a, an absolute shame. But, you know, I'm reading the press in terms of Kenny Jacket, I think they've got a guy there that he's, he's saying the right things, and hopefully he'll do the right things and he'll get us yeah, back at the first time. He seems a good manager uh, at that level, though. He's a championship, you know? Um, Owen, have you got any more questions for Steve, mate? Uh, just the one quick yeah. one for him. Um, I also read that uh, you got into the uh, the pub trade. I just wanted to know whether which one was easier, working in the pub trade or a footballer? Um, you probably got the same amount of time off <laughs> <laughs> selling beer and, uh, and, and and trading and, and not doing much in the afternoon. Uh, yeah, I, I worked for um, a company called Carlsberg Kettley for about eleven years. And then went to work for a mate of mine at uh, a small brewery in Walsall, Highgate Brewery, for five years with him. And uh, it's great. I enjoyed it. It gave me a, a, an insight into a different part of business um, in the business sector. And I, it made it because when you're a footballer, you, you don't have a lot to do other than play football. And I always used to sort of respect people and. and uh, that went out to work and they had, the, they had different jobs and, and they had to do a lot of thinking, a lot of work in there. And and I went there and, and to be honest with you, when he asked me to go and do the job, and I said, well, I've got to be honest with you, mate, I, I only know how to drink beer. You know, I don't know how to sell it. And he said, well, the teacher. And, it, mate, I learned so much about the, the that industry, the the the, uh, the brewery industry. It was it's fantastic. And I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, it was it was I was in it for probably fifteen years and uh, under the same guy and it was fantastic. I really really enjoyed it. So really, I've I've, I've got no complaints. I've had a fantastic career and, and 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 a great time after football. So you know, I've got no complaints in any way, shape, or form. Brilliant, Chris. Well, I, c- I can honestly say, Steve, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on tonight. Uh, hopefully, we'll have you on again in the future if Wolves can get. Uh, promoted this year back to the championship we'll have you on to maybe do a quick review of their season uh, no problem come May or June but I'm sure the other guys will agree with me it's been a pleasure 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Pleasure to talk to you, fellas. Absolutely. Cheers, Steve. Thanks, Thanks very for much. inviting me on. No problem at all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers, Steve. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.